In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create iFeatures for our own personal use. In this file, creating iFeatures IPT, I've already created a few setup parameters and good controllable features that will operate correctly for an iFeature. Let's review those. When I look at my parameters, I can see I have a few things pre-named, such as pattern count, pattern angle, and distance from bottom. In my feature list, I have protrusion, intercut, flange hole, and hole pattern also renamed so I can better visualize what they are. When I look at sketch 5 that makes up this extrusion that I've created, I can see I have a value of 66 controlling it from this bottom edge. When I look at that, I can see it is my distance from bottom parameter. Now this would be important if I want to predefine an edge that this needs to come down from. If in my eye feature, I don't want to have to worry about specifying a face or an edge, then I should remove these references. It's important to notice that when you go through and create an eye feature, anything that becomes a parent-child relationship will carry through and have to become a variable or a selection that you do when placing your eye feature. I'm going to make this a little bit more generic and remove this 66, as well as the projected geometry that came with that bottom edge. So here I really just have these two circles. Now I should probably rename these to better values. Here I have ID with 50, and my 65 is OD. So those are pre-done for me as well. I'll finish my sketch here. I'll look at the protrusion to see that it does come up three millimeters from the surface. Now I wanna make sure that that three millimeters also has a good parameter to it. So let me rename that here, or I could have done it in the dialog box as well. Now here, three millimeters is actually to a fillet. There I can see D19 is actually that height defined by the protrusion. When I look at the inner cut, which is a hole that cuts through there, I can see it's actually going between two faces, the top face of my protrusion and the inner face of the wall of this particular piece. That way I don't have to define a specialized depth for this flange opening. When I look at the sketch that's made up for that inner cut, I'm also just sharing sketch five. When I look at the hole that's created there, you can see I'm using projected geometry from the protrusion only, and then putting a center point with equal distance center line between those two projected circles. When I look at the sizing of the hole, I have it predefined to be an ANSI metric M profile, M5 by 0.8, and having to go to a specified bottom face. I told to specify a two option. That's going to be something I'm going to have to select when I end up placing the eye feature as well. Lastly, I have my hole pattern. So I have my six UL, my pattern count. I can see that being the name of the parameter there. And my 360 being my pattern angle value. So essentially, these features right here, these last four in my tree, are pretty well isolated from the entire design. Creating an eye feature, try to create it so it's generic enough to work in multiple scenarios. Now, in order to start the creation process, I'll go up to my Manage tab, and on the Author panel, I will choose the option called Extract Eye Feature. Here, I now need to select what features to carry through into my IDE. When I choose the protrusion, it automatically picks up additional features as well because they have child relationships to that extrusion. Anything that was already pre-named by assigning a parametric name to it instead of a D value will automatically be populated into the right-hand side. If there was something missing, I could add it at this time as well. So here I have my flange height for the entrance, the ID, the OD, my pattern angle, and my pattern count. Now over on the right-hand side of that column there, I can also adjust the prompt for these. Now the prompt is pretty straightforward. Maybe I just want them to be a little bit more visually appealing. Instead of pattern angle, I could say enter angle for bolt circle. Instead of pattern count, I could say number of holes. OD and ID are pretty descriptive. Instead of this parameter, I'll call it enter flange height. Now I can also predefine different types of limits. The flange height, maybe that doesn't have any limit under the sun, because that's right now is what it's showing me. It shows none. Well, I'd like my limit to be specified to only be three millimeters, five, and seven. I'll come in here and choose a list of values, and I'll enter some new ones, with my default being 
3. For my ID and OD, I also want to specify values for these, but this time within a range greater than or equal to 40 and less than or equal to 60. For OD, greater than or equal to 50 and less than or equal to 75. Now I have my size parameters more intelligently controlled for when I want to make that entrance flange repeatable. For my pattern count, I also would change that to a range as well. Lowest amount of holes will be four and the maximum amount of holes will be eight. My next step is to assign my position geometry. Here I have sketch plane one, surface one, and termination plane one. These refer to my different extent options that I went through when I created these particular features. This is my sketch plane that I place it on. So here I'll have pick entrance face, surface one will be my interface, termination face one will be my interface as well, because that's where I want my holes to terminate at the same time. Now, one last step here before I go any further. I do want to come up here to I feature one and rename this. This will give it a little bit more descriptive of a personality from when I place it in. Now my same kind of rules for parameters apply to my I feature name. I can't have spaces, I can't start it with a number, and you can't use special characters. Here I have flange connection. Now when I go to save this, it's going to ask me where I would like to save this particular I feature. I'm going to put it in an infinite skills folder that I've created. If I go up one level, I'll start to see different folders in here as well. The geometric shapes, pockets and bosses, punches and slots are all predefined and come with the software. Here I'm just going to add it to this folder. There's my flange connection IDE. I'll get a message that it's not available in the active project. That's okay. I'll go ahead and select yes. And I have now generated a new flange connection IDE. When I go up to my pull down list to find an I feature, this will now become available for me to place in flange connection. If I would like to browse to it by using a traditional type of window browse, I'll choose insert eye feature and as well browse to that location. I have created a completed version of this and added it to your working files directory. So in recap, some of the important things to look at here for eye feature creation is good parameter names, proper termination references, and not to include too many parent references so that it stifles your placement of that eye feature when you go to eventually add it to your design.